Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our command judge Sophroni in his work, which is basically an autobiography, autobiography, which you'll see him as he is, at one point says, if I may be so bold, God is humility. And I think that is a very accurate statement. He makes the point several times in that chapter, because if he would take after me, then take up his cross and follow me, but then take up his yoke and follow me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Learn from me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. God truly is humble in the greatest sense of the word. And God sees his own image in us when he sees us bearing those virtues that are like him. Of course, that virtue is the greatest of humility, that fullness of self-knowledge. Of course, that knowledge for him is rather different from us as he is uncreated and we are created. He is perfect and we are not. He is without sin and we are, of course, full of sin. So to be like him, we have to have this awareness of this knowledge and try to be more like him, to be meek and gentle. Like my Sophroni goes on to say that pride separates us from God and it shuts up a man in himself because we shut up ourselves from others, we shut up ourselves from any correction, we shut up ourselves from, from God, and that is that separation because God exalts those who are humble and the base is those who exalt themselves. So we must learn humility. And we see, of course, in this parable today, people who do not have humility. The Lord builds them a vineyard to produce the fruit that they need. And he digs a wine press in it. Of course, for the Israelites, this is, of course, for their sacrifices, for their temple, that they might have this this mystery, this connection with God. And he hedges it about, senses it in with the law and the teachings, that they might be protected from what is outside of that relationship with God. Builds them a tower, which is the city of Jerusalem, a place to go and worship. And gives them prophets and priests to lead them and guide them. But as he so accurately describes, as they see in this parable, and it of course irritates them greatly, they have killed all of these people and rejected them over and over again. One just really needs to read a history of the people of Israel to go through the Old Testament and you will see not only with Moses, with Dathan and Abiram and Aaron setting up the golden image, and then throughout the Judges and the Chronicles and the books of Kings over and over and over, turning away from God and turning back when the prophet or the judge comes. And many times the prophet gets killed, and many times the prophet gets persecuted. And he takes it so far in this parable so accurately to describe that eventually the master sends his son. And this son, of course, is Christ himself, the one who's proclaiming this parable. And they take him outside and kill him, that the inheritance might be theirs. Because people rise up wanting to be God themselves, not only Adam and Eve, but we all do that. We want to take control of our own lives and do what we want to do, exercise our own will, exercise, feel up to self-love only for ourselves, thinking we can make things better, but we become miserable in doing this. Over and over again, we fail. Because what we have done for ourselves in following our own rules, our own will, and not following the teaching of the church is we have set up battle which will come collapsing around us and institute confusion. Because what happens with self-will, what happens with man's will, is, is chaos, is fragmentation, breaking apart from one another. But following God's will brings unity, and brings peace, and brings humility. For God is humility. We have a great contrast with this, I think, in the three youths, Ananiah, Azariah, and Misael. They found themselves under a ruler, a man that they didn't necessarily want to be over them, Nebuchadnezzar. But yet, they did what Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to do for the most part. They were faithful servants of Nebuchadnezzar, faithful servants of the king, and good citizens of his kingdom, even though, of course, they had been exiled from Jerusalem, because time after time again, as the parable said, the people turned away from the master. 
And so would they find themselves in a place where Nebuchadnezzar wants them to sacrifice to him, to offer sacrifice to his idol. And this is a line which has to be drawn in the sand for them because they cannot turn away from God. They can be obedient up to that point. These other people didn't want to be even obedient to that point, any point. They just wanted their own will. They were not going to follow anyone over them and have anyone over them because they had no humility. But Ananias and Azariah and Misael reject this teaching and say we cannot possibly do this. So he heats up his furnace to throw them into it, trying to scare them. That those who are still and know that he is God do not fear this. Notice they go in here without trembling, without protest, without speaking out against Nebuchadnezzar, without criticizing him, criticizing his false god, yes, but not him. They go in there with the greatest of humility. They do much as Christ in Gethsemane, and that the Lord's will be done in their life. And they go into this furnace, and as they sit there, they sing this beautiful song that we sing on Holy Saturday. Blessed be the Lord, the God of our fathers, and praise and exalted be his name unto the ages. And they sit there and don't say, woe is me, why me, why is somebody over me that I don't want, why am I not getting my own way, why can I do the things exactly the way I want to do, I'm going to take my ball and play somewhere else. They don't do this whatsoever. They say, you are just, O God, in all that you have done, because... We have sinned against you. They exercise profound humility and realize they're in the place they are because of the sins of the people. And they reckon their own sins as the cause of this. And because of this humility that they exercise in the furnace, a fourth appears with them. That angel of the Lord, who is of course the incarnate word, Christ himself. If you look at the icons of that, in particular, you'll see the on the I am, and the nimbus of that angel. It is Christ himself walking with them in the furnace. And that wind, as they are stoking, the furnace becomes a cool breeze of the Holy Spirit. And that those flames become coolness of dew for them as they sit there and sing unto the Lord, and exalt him into ages, and praise the sun and the heavens and the moon and the stars. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise prophets, priests, apostles as we sing and they praise God for this difficult situation they've been put in because they know that it is God's will and it is God's providence and it is God's way for them in their life, unlike the people in the parable who decided to cast up everyone who tried to correct them. And because of this, Nebuchadnezzar becomes humbled. Because of what these men are able to do, because of their own lives, they show forth humility. Because God is humility. We must learn from these three youths. We must learn, of course, from the people in the parable and stop rejecting authority in our lives, stop rejecting what the church teaches, which is nothing but the revelation of God and the life of the Holy Spirit in the church, and live those gospel commandments because he too has dug a vineyard for us, the church. He too has built an altar, a wine press where the blood and the body of Christ pour forth for us that we might receive that grace. He too has hedged us about with a wall, with a wall of the teachings of the church, of the gospel commandments, of the holy canons, of the holy tradition, of the priests and the bishops and the saints from all times. He too desires our salvation because God is humility. And we must emulate these three youths and not emulate the people who constantly reject the authority that is put over them, but humble ourselves recognize our sins, and bless the God of our fathers, and praise and exalt him unto the ages. Amen. Amen.